Hi everyone, my name is Glenn Bartley and welcome to another YouTube video. In today's video, I'm just going to walk you through how I would process this image of a sage thrasher that I took last week down in Washington. Um, I like this image. It's a you know nice looking bird up in good light. He's singing, everything's good. But there's a few distracting elements, uh, namely for me, I don't like this little branch sticking into the corner here. Um, this one here that's sticking out from kind of behind him, and especially this one here that's right behind his head is quite distracting to me. Other than that, the image is just going to require some pretty minor alterations. Um, so let me go ahead and walk you through this. Now if you have purchased my post-processing ebook, or if you've paid attention to some of the videos on this site, you'll know that I like to do kind of a basic set of adjustments to all of my images. Got those written down in an action over here called my normal workflow. So let me just go ahead and play that action. It's going to start with doing a levels adjustment. We will hold down the Alt key, take a look at our white point, decide where we want to set that. Uh, maybe do a little adjustment there. We'll set our black point similarly. Um, something like that. And then we'll do our midtones. And I'm just using the arrow keys up and down on my keyboard here just to so that I can be looking at the image and not so much the slider itself. That looks pretty good to me. Maybe just brighten up those mids a bit. Okay. It asks if we want to do any layer masking. In this case, I don't think that's necessary. If we had made any images of the Im any areas of the image too bright, we could go over and mask them. But in this case, we'll just continue with our action. Uh, we might... No, I don't think we're going to do too much to the highlights here and there's not particularly too much shadow area to worry about, but I might just try to brighten up these, this area here a little bit. We are now going to look at the hue and saturation. In this case, there's not a whole lot I want to do. If anything, maybe I'll use the little slider here and think about making the blues a little bit more saturated. Just make the sky look a little bluer. That looks pretty good. Check in with our contrast. Just using the preview button here to see what's going on and I think we'll just add a tiny bit of contrast now my action asks me to select the background for noise removal in this case probably not necessary since I shot it at an ISO 200 I would say but I'll just go ahead and use the magic wand just for the sake of illustration to select most of this this one gets a bit tricky because if you wanted to be to do a perfect job you'd have to get in between all these little spots um, where the sky shines through and that would be time consuming. You could do a selection based on color range, um, but in this case, since there's hardly any noise in the image anyways, I'm just gonna do a kind of a half-assed job and call it good. So then I will continue my action. It's gonna run the noise reduction filter and it's gonna ask me where I wanna save this image. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and save over the original file here on my desktop. And that's fine. So we'd basically be done now at this point. We could then go ahead and resize this for web or uh, save the file in whatever storage method that you like to do. But as I mentioned, we've got a few distracting elements we've got to deal with here. So let's start with this one. Of course, we could just clone over this. That would be super easy. But I find that more and more I'm just turning to the Content Aware Fill tool. So that's Shift F5 on my keyboard. And it just does such a good job of, of hammering out these um, undesired areas. But here, since these ones are actually intersecting the bird, we're going to have to do a little bit of work. So I'm using my navigator tool up there, as you might have noticed. I'm going to grab the clone stamp. I've got it set on 100% opacity right now because I do want to actually... Basically what I'm trying to do here is create separation between the bird itself and the undesired element. So that was really easy to do there. I'll just circle my undesired element here with the patch tool and patch it out. You can see how easy and how good of a job that did. Now we'll go up and deal with this larger object here. And same idea, I'm going to try to create separation between um, the bird and this stick. So I'll just start working my way down from here. I'm cloning a sort of similar tone of the sky, which is right next to this area here. And I'm just, I don't, I'm not worried about all this business. I'm just trying to create a gap between the bird and this so that I can select the undesired part of the tree and then clone it out. And I think I'll use the content aware once again. That's probably good enough now. Maybe I'll just 
run along here because there's a bit of artifacts from the noise reduction. And I'll zoom out and I can see my whole branch here so I'm just going to grab the uh, lasso tool. I'll go ahead and circle around my branch. Don't have to be too precise here. This area here I'm going to have to be a bit careful with my mouse just kind of shooting through this gap that we've created. There we go. That looks pretty good. I might just I might just uh, tweak that a little bit there, give myself a bit more of a gap. And now, the old Shift F5, Content Aware Fill, and we're done. So, just a quick video to show you a couple different cloning methods using the Clone Stamp, Patch Tool, and Content Aware Fill. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it helps you with your post processing. If you are interested, you may want to check out my ebook on post processing: A Guide for Nature Photographers. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.